to Bondage Breakers Ministry Global, BBMG, brothers and sisters in Christ. Well, welcome to our weekly Sabbath day to day with Prophet Charles and Evangelist Keisha. It's time to welcome all of our brothers and sisters from the seven continents across the globe, starting with the continent of Africa, Europe, Asia, North America, South America, Australia, and Antarctica. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, and good night. <laughs> Depending on where you are, <laughs> where you're from, it's okay to laugh sometimes. It is. It's okay to laugh. Depending on where you are, where you're from, in all the continents. Uh, my brothers and sisters, it is our pleasure to welcome you to our weekly tele Mm-hmm. To finish part two of our last week message titled Serve God While You Are Young. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, what an awesome uh, message last week. Today we will try and finish it up. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, if it's well, 5 p.m. right here in Atlanta, Georgia, 10 p.m. in Lagos, Nigeria. By the way, happy birthday to Nigeria because uh, today is Nigerian Independence Day. Oh, wow. <laughs> happy birthday, Nigeria. Uh, happy birthday. I just hope that uh, you are not just padding up birthday after birthday. Uh, please make good use of your experience, Nigeria. You know, we should be moving forward in that country, not moving backward, okay? Right. Happy birthday. Move forward. Move your people forward. It is time. It is time. Well, brothers and sisters, without further delay, um, we will go ahead and start with our weekly declaration. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, so we can get this going. Uh, if you are ready, I will ask our evangelist. How are you, my evangelist? I'm well, Prophet Atoy. Man, I just bypass <laughs> introducing my evangelist, who is always okay. right here in the studio. Our most beautiful evangelistic prophet. Amen. Amen, amen. <laughs> you know, we we'll ask our evangelist to put the scripture of the day. All right, before then, let's go ahead and do our declaration first. Yes, sir. Amen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, if you guys are ready, we are ready. Are you ready, our evangelist? Yes, sir. And our declaration is on the screen. Luke 4.18, we will be gleaning from the New Living Translation. I'm sorry, the New King James Version. I'm always in the New uh, Living Translation in the Amplified Version. This is the New King James Version. It's right here on the screen that's, for you. Yes. That's cool. We toggle back and forth from all the, uh, the different versions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. We're ready. Amen. Let's go. The, the Spirit, Spirit of, of the Lord, Lord is upon, upon me because, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. poor. He, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. That says the Lord our God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our Almighty Creator, the only one, our Heavenly Father, Father, we just come to you right now in the most humble way we know. Yes. We thank you for being God. We thank you for being who you are. Yes. Father, Lord, there is nothing we can do without you. You are our creator. We are your creation. Father, Lord, continue to lead us to do those things that you want us to do. Yes. So that we can only be influenced by your voice. Only your voice. Only your voice we hear and only your voice we listen to. No other voices shall we listen to in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Father, we bless and we pray for every single soul worship from across the globe right now. Yes. Meet them at the point of their needs. Father Lord, everybody might have a need. You are the provider of all needs. 
Father, Lord, we ask that you meet every individual as they present themselves to you right now. Every single soul who may have one need or the other. Father, protect them. Protect them in the morning. Father, protect them in the afternoon. Father, protect them in the evening. Or even when they sleep at night. Yes. Father, at work, protect them. In school, protect them. Yes. On the road, protect them. At home, protect them. Yes. But I will yield every part of our being to you. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Take over. Because we cannot do this without you. Have your way. Yes. Right now. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, Hallelujah. amen. Brothers and sisters, Glory. it's an exciting day today. Yes. We so much enjoy our last topic. Mm-hmm. It's such a vast topic. We couldn't finish it last week. We said we will finish it this week, today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, we des- designated last week as part one. Today will be part two. Or rather, the, the final part of this message. Serve God while you are young. Mm-hmm. Because our, our God wants us to give him the best. Yes. The best of us. Yes. It's, re- it's the reason why he rejected so many sacrifices from, from certain people within the scripture. Because they did not give him the best. Mm-hmm. So our best to God is our youth. Mm. Okay, where we are energetic. Yes. Okay, to do things for him. Now when we get old, this is an opportunity. Yeah, it is an opportunity to give the very best to our almighty creator. Amen. Amen. I will, of course, you guys know, as usual, we do have 8 billion souls in all the continents of the globe. 8 billions. 8 with billions would be. Mm-hmm. Our mandate here is simple. We do go after one soul at a time. One soul at a time. If it is only one soul, who will receive this message today, no matter where you are in the world? No matter where you are. And, change, and this soul change, changes his or her life. And turn from wherever you serve into our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. All of heaven rejoices. Yes. Amen. Amen. Just like the Lordship, the prodigal son. That's right. All of heaven will rejoice. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, because of one soul. Our primary mandate here is simple. Please go after one soul at a time. Mm-hmm. One at a time. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to use our evangelist to kind of put the scripture we'll be talking about today on this screen and you, if you don't mind you're going to go over this scripture again I will you know I know My pleasure. we were talking about two scriptures simultaneously mm-hmm. you know um, because there are two versions uh, just for clarity purposes and uh, we'll go from there amen amen brothers and sisters in Christ right here on the screen for you Our foundational scriptures for today, and as Prophet Atoy said, we do have two. So we have Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 9 through 10, and we will be gleaning from two versions. That's going to be the message version and the easy reading version, the ERV version. And we also have Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Here it is. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, 13 through 14. But first, right here on the screen for you, giving you an opportunity to open up your word and keep us accountable. But right here on the screen, let's go ahead and glean. Let's get into it. This is going to be amazing. Remember, this is part two. Still giving you time to turn to it in your word or get it on your your, uh, devices so you can uh, track with us and follow us. Uh, serve the Lord, serve God while you are young, part two of this. Go back in, glean from, and look at part one. It's really, really good. All right, come on, I believe you're ready. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 9 through 10, and that is the message version. And it reads, you who are young, make the most of your your youth, relish your youthful vigor. Follow the impulses of your heart. If something looks good to you, pursue it. But know also 
that not just anything goes. You have to answer to God for every last bit of it. Live footloose and fancy free. You won't be young forever. Youth lasts about as long as smoke. Yes, now the easy reading version of that says, so young people, enjoy yourselves while you are young. Be happy. Do whatever your heart leads you to do. Do whatever you want. But remember that God will judge you. Elohim God. God will judge you for everything you do. Don't let your anger control you and don't let your body lead you to sin. People do foolish things in the dawn of life while they are young and i said old as well <laughs> but they're talking about the young right here when you're young now let's move on to the second passage of scripture that we're gleaning from that's ecclesiastes chapter 12 verses 13 through 14 the message version and equally the easy reading version that we will read here all right, it's on the screen for you. You just wanted to turn a page over. That's all you had to do, just one page. All right, come on, let's go. The message version of this, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 through 14 reads, But regarding anything beyond this, dear friend, go easy. There's no end to the publishing of books, and constant study wears you out, so you're no good for anything else. The last and final word is this. Fear God. Do what he tells you. And that's it. Eventually, God will bring everything that we do out into the open and judge it according to its hidden intent, whether it's good or evil. Now, the easy reading version says, now, what should we learn from everything that is written in this book? The most important thing a person can do is to respect Elohim God and obey his commands because he knows about everything people do, even the secret things. He knows about all the good and all the bad and he will judge people for everything they do. Wow. Amen. Amen. Thank you, our evangelist. My pleasure. For that beautiful scripture. These words are from the scripture. These words were not manifested by us. Mm -hmm. These are straight from the scripture, meaning inspired by the Holy Spirit. Yes. So every single word that was mentioned, every single thing that was said, straight from the scripture. So it, these are words we have to take very seriously. Yes. These are not things we should, we should play about. Mm -hmm. Because you might have the freedom to do what you want to do. I mean, this is a choice God has given us. But remember, in the end, we are going to be judged by everything we do. That's right. Good or bad. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. For a recap, our evangelist, if you don't mind, if you can pull the first uh, slide out there, you know, from one through three. So can you kind of go to our last message mm -hmm. before we uh, concentrate on today's uh, message or the rest of the messages, you know? Yes. You know, last week, brothers and sisters, we cover from... Point number one to point number four. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. we said today we we'll continue with five to uh, uh, eight, right? Five mm -hmm. to eight, mm -hmm. so that uh, we can go ahead and finish it up. Point number one last week was, of course, the title we all are aware by now is "Serve God While You Are Young." Man, give your best to God. Okay. Point number one was make life decision early. Okay, make it early. Don't let's say make his where the sun shine, right? That's right. So don't allow it to be said too late. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then point number two, do whatever your heart desires. Okay, whatever your heart desires, as long as you know that no matter or whatever you do, 
Okay? In the end, God is going to judge you. And that's the caveat. Okay. Know that you whatever you do, because that, listen, yeah. the, the word of God says, and I don't know if I said this on last week, right here at this point, Prophet Atoy, mm-hmm. that everything, the word of God, and I believe it's in James, says everything is permissible. <laughs> but everything is not beneficial. That's right. And then this word equally went further to say, however, do whatever you your heart desires. Mm-hmm. However, just know that you're going to be judged. Oh, that's right. By Elohim God. That's right. For everything that, that, that you There is do. a limitation to every choice that we have. Mm-hmm. Man, that is the reason. That was the reason I went to. Uh, I touched about the garden mm-hmm. when God gave me instruction to um, Adam and Eve, and give them all. The food they should eat from, yes. right? but he instructed them shouldn't they shouldn't touch one particular food. Okay, meaning he gave them a liberty, the liberty to do what they want to do and eat everything. But he said, "But do not touch this fruit right here." That's but, right. But what did they do? They touched that fruit. So you, you might have the liberty, the freedom to do whatever you want to do, but remember that in the end you're going to be judged That's right. by what you do. That's okay, right. Choose then. wisely. That's right. <laughs> the yes. point number three uh, from last week said, do not let your what? Your anger control you. Right. You know, the scripture equally said that, you know, if you have a dispute between you and your brothers. Yes. Go and settle them first mm-hmm. before you present any gift mm-hmm. to the altar. In other words, if you are in church or trying to, you know, give a gift offering, tithes, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, you say your gift will be rejected. They tell you, hold on to your gift. Yes. Go first and settle with your brothers and your sisters. This That's is the scripture right. saying this now. That's right. Settle with them first. Then you can come back. You can come back and offer your gift. Mm-hmm. There is a reason for that because God doesn't want anything out of anger. Okay, say quickly, if somebody offends you, quickly forgive them. Yes. Clear your mind. See, forgiveness is not really for the person that you have of, that have offended you. Mm-hmm. Forgiveness is for you. Yes. It's, to, it's for you. It's, it's, it's like um, it's the breaking of chain from you. Mm-hmm. It's free you from bondages. You know, because if you don't forgive somebody, you carry in the, the, the anger and the pain. It's like somebody carrying gas in their system, like yes. I said before. And if you're carrying gas, you know what I'm talking about. So you got to let that gas go. That's right. You feel better, right? Okay. <laughs> if you're carrying gas, the moment you let it go, you start to feel better right away. That is your life forgiveness. If you are not forgiving anybody, you are carrying gas in your system. Mm-hmm. Let it go. Mm-hmm. Let it go. Let it go, okay? Yeah. And it's toxic to hold on it to is. it. It is. You it know, is. and we did say last week equally, don't let the word says, don't let the sun go down on your mm-hmm. rap. Don't go to bed angry. Mm-hmm. What if that's your last night? That's right. That's this right. man dreamt about, well, actually, he was in a quarrel. This is real. This is real life stuff that happened. This man, I read this story or, or watched this video about this man who was angry with his wife. And he went to bed angry with his wife and woke up in hell. Actually, he died, right? Mm-hmm. He left the house. He died and, listen, ended up in hell. And this was a man of God. Mm-hmm. But because of unforgiveness, he was carrying unforgiveness. Mm. I mean, so it's just so many accounts of situations like that. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't let your anger control you because I heard another wise man, just as wise as my amazing prophet, a toy, that said, the man who angers you controls you. That's right. That's <laughs> Come right. on. The man who angers you so, controls you. Don't let your anger control control you. So, brothers and sister, if somebody have offended you right now and you are angry about something, it's time to let go. Let that person go. Forgive mm-hmm. them. Now, let's go to point number four. Four, please. All right. Point number four. Point number four says, do not let your body lead you to sin. Okay? Do not uh, let your body lead you to sin. You know, we have so many of you that are so beautiful and do not be carried. It's not what, uh, they say it's not what you are driving. It's what is driving you, right? That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's what right. is driving you. Mm-hmm. Yes. You see, whatever that God has given you, 
the gift of beauty or smartness, skills, talent is for you to serve others unto the Lord, right? Yes, yes. Okay, whatever God has given to us is to use it to serve others. Okay, don't be stingy with the gift God has given you. See, so point number four, like I just said, do not let your body lead you to sin. That is where we stopped last week. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So we just rushed through that. Today, because so many people were asking questions, what is that that we have to do to mm -hmm. make up in alignment with the Word of God? Mm -hmm. You know, what should we do? What should we do? So how do we live? What do we have to do? Yes. We said today we'll continue from point number five uh, to eight so that you will now know what you should be doing and what you should be doing. Right. Amen. Right. So point number five said, study Galatians 5, 19 to 21 on what not to do. Hmm. Well, I do hope that all of you that were here last week study Galatians. Mm -hmm. If you did not study Galatians, what you shouldn't do, we are going to go through it right now briefly. I'll ask our evangelist to put it up. I want you to start, instead of starting from 19 to 21, I want you to start from 16. Yes. Evangelist. Yes. So go to Galatians 5, chapter 5, verses 16 to 21, or what we should not do. Okay. Yes. This is God speaking to all of us. Okay. Yes. So go ahead. Please. Absolutely, Prophet. It's totally my pleasure. And as you can see, our young doctor here is expressing exactly what it is. And we're going to share with you exactly her sentiments on this of not letting your body lead you to sin. And as our young doctor would say here, living by the Spirit's power. That's what she would say. Living by the Spirit's power. Why would she say that? Because that's what the Word of God says in this young woman of God, this young doctor, lives by the power of Holy Spirit. That's how she can do it. That's how they do it. That's how they don't allow their body to lead them to sin. So when we look at that uh, verse 16 in this Galatians chapter 5, it says, So I say, and I am reading from the New Living Translation on this, it says, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants and the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature wants so when we say the spirit we're talking about holy spirit we're talking about the difference between and the contrast between uh what satan wants us to do that sinful dark nature and our new nature which is that that is governed by holy spirit so and Holy Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful dark nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by Holy Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. Therefore, you won't fail at it because the grace of God is imputed to you. So it is not that you'll be able to do this on your own, but when you have the Spirit of the living God powering your your uh, uh, your new nature and powering your flesh, then you don't have to worry about the enemy sideswiping you. Are you feeling like I can't do this? And you're right, you can't do it alone, but when you have Holy Spirit, you can do it. Okay? So, but when you are directed by Holy Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. Why? Because the grace of God is imputed to you. You don't have to worry about fulfilling the law. None of us can do what the law says, but it is the blood of Jesus that came to uh, fulfill the law but not to abolish it. Therefore, we know how to govern ourselves. All right, so moving on down to 19 when it says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. And this is what our young doctor, our young beautiful doctor here is saying, straight from the word of God. 
When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. And these are the results that our young doctor came back with clearly from the word of God. Sexual immorality. Okay, I just hope that if you don't mind putting a pin on that for a second, this particular uh, uh, scripture that is being read is exactly what we shouldn't be doing. Okay, if you want to be in luck step, you want to luck step with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. These are some of the things, or rather, these are the things, might not be everything, but I mean, everything here plus more. These are the things you shouldn't be doing. Yes. Okay? Because when you do this, you are feeding your flesh. You know, mm -hmm. men do not live by bread alone, right? But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. When you, whatever your, 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 your sinful, whatever you eat, to feed, if you are feeding your flesh, guess what? You say the flesh is an enemy to the spirit. Yes. So you want to focus on feeding the spirit of God instead of the flesh. And this is, whatever is going to be rare right now, it's what the flesh desires, mm -hmm. and which mm -hmm. is the enemy to God. Okay, mm -hmm. God doesn't mm -hmm. like all this. Go ahead, our evangelist. Yes, you sir. It, which That's clearly says team. these are the things, right, Prophet Toy, on what not to do. That's right. Okay, so the sinful dog nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. So jumping back down to the 19, that then says very clearly sexual immorality. Hmm. Impurity, hmm. lustful pleasures. No, before you move on, see sexual immorality. Let me just, you know, uh, Elaborate. make a comment. Just a mm -hmm. comment on that. You see, if you are not married, mm -hmm. you see, any sex out of marriage is sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, yes, sex is good, but before you have sex, make sure you get married. Mm -hmm. Get married first, and you can have it as much as you want for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. But Anything outside of your marriage, okay, your matrimonial home, your covenant marriage, okay, mm -hmm. is sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. Okay, they, they hold yourself and keep yourself for the right person, and it's going to be good because that is what God loves. Mm -hmm. Anything mm -hmm. outside of that is considered sexual immorality. That's okay? right. That's right. And when you look that up, it virtually just says to you. You know, uh, adultery, fornication. Anything out of you know, out of your marriage. Anything fall into that category. Yeah. Full, that's right, Prophet of Toy. Full yes. stop. Anything outside of your covenant marriage and whatever that would look like. And then there are things that Holy Spirit will convict your heart of inside of your marriage that you should not be doing. Things that's not going to glorify God or cause you to be. Uh, you know, reproducers of that that God have placed on the inside of you. Okay, so when life then comes out of your covenant, when life comes out of what you're doing that God has blessed. Yeah, I have to use this opportunity to say this as well while we're talking about that. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about marriage, it's a, it's, it's a marriage, it's a covenant between uh, a male and a female. Mm -hmm. Okay, not a male to male or a female to female. Okay, that is not marriage. Okay. The marriage between a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. That is what God recognized. Mm -hmm. And that is what we recognize. And that is what it is. Any marriage, because people are marrying themselves these days. Mm -hmm. Men getting married to men, women getting married to men. No, 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 no. The only marriage you're talking about between a man and a woman. People that have the ability to reproduce. Yes. Because God created us, go into the world and multiply. Be fruitful and, so, and multiply. And some of us take it literally. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> and so. Prophet the Toy, listen what's so interesting about that. You said some of people marrying themselves. Literally, a woman wanted to or said she married herself. And then there was a man who went to court and he was upset because the judgment was not found in his favor that he could marry his computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, right. people nowadays wanting to marry animals. Mm. You know, I love our pets. I have uh, beautiful little pets, mm. you know, that I am grand auntie to and that I am grandma to. But they are not the same species, so you would not engage in It's demonic, exactly. <laughs> That's what you know. What our youth is saying in the chat is demonic. You know, when you think of sexual immorality and what not to do, 
it spans it's, it it spans just the covenant marriage. Yeah, I, I just like, want to put that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that your marriage says within your marriage is what well, is is good, but I just wanted to clarify uh, this marriage. Yes, sir. A lot of things are getting married over there, mm -hmm. so it's, it has to be between a male and a female. As God had created us to be. And that's what that's Elohim it. God recognizes. And that's what we stand on. Amen. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So sexual immorality. Impurity. And impurity shakes hands with that sexual immorality. Anything that God deems is not clean. It's he said, that's it. Touch not the unclean thing. What does that look like? That looks like anything that would be perverse, anything that would be perverted, anything outside of the will of God. And that's why we're sharing it with you. So these things shake hands. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures idolatry, worshiping that anything yeah. other than God. Our God is a, our God is a jealous God. Mm -hmm. He said, only him we shall worship. You know, he said, you shouldn't worship any other image or an image, the likeness of him. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. This is idolatry. So we got to stay away from all that. Brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. family, friends, if you are hearing our voice today, anything apart from the God of Abraham is the reason why I start my prayer by calling the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes, because people people have so many gods now. Mm -hmm. When someone is talking about God, it is important to ask which God are you referring to. That's right. Sometimes you will be thinking they are talking about God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm -hmm. but they are talking about other gods. Anything that takes your time, that you take away from God, is your God. Yes. Could be money. Yes. Could be sun. Could be the moon. Could be a girlfriend. Whatever that takes you away. Could be your cell phone, your computer. Food, clothes, okay. work. I mean, come on. That becomes your Children, God. Children, spouses, you said that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead, on yours. Sorcery is another one that is going to speak to uh, individuals w doing witchcraft. They are using powers that are not of God. They're not being powered by God, but they're seeking answers and, you know, uh, going and reading the stars and, and all of these different things from a different source you know, that is demonic. Back when I was growing up, uh, when I first came to this country, the United States, I come from Nigeria, so um, I thought witchcraft is too popular in Africa, okay? In Nigeria and the rest of African countries, uh, that uh, America over here they may not have witches. Oh, I, what was that? What was I talking about? Hmm. So witches are all over the world, mm -hmm. all over the world, okay? And these are, you know, brutes of vipers. These are uh, uh, agent of Satan. Mm -hmm. So stay away from it. Yeah. Stay away from it. You know, because you are doing. Whatever you are doing is contrary to what God wants us to do. Yes, yes. Okay. And necromancy, profitatory, that is talking to the dead and, you know, uh, going and seeking and, and seeking advice from individuals who communicate with the dead. Hmm. Are these palm readers too? Yes. You know, native daughters. You know. Soothsayers. When you stay away from all this, these yeah. are all contrary to what God wants us to do. Yeah. See, if you are practicing all this, you are walking, taking step by step away from God. You are stepping away from God. Mm hmm. Seances. You don't want to. Yes, witchcraft. And just what the our youth are saying there in the chat and just speaking to. You know, they, what they're doing is normalizing witchcraft. And making it a trend. Yes, very demonic. Yeah, I mean, we were looking at something. There was something that you were looking at uh, on uh, YouTube yesterday, Prophet Toy, that just came across the screen where this young man was doing magic. Magic is one of the things. Yes, tarot, tarot cards, tarot card readings, all of that stuff, Ouija boards, all of that is sorcery and witchcraft. This young man was invoking certain things from the spirit world mm -hmm. and people were shocked and they were looking at it and they were in awe but we know that it was demonic that's why mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. why but yes reading of tarot cards and they are normalizing it absolutely 
Yes, that's the feedback that we're getting from the youth in the chat regarding this. So that's real. So these are the things that you don't want to do as our beautiful young doctor is showing us what that looks like in Galatians. Sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissensions, division. Envy, drunkenness, wild parties, wow. and other sins like these, like orgies, etc. And even when you look at that selfish ambition, when it says serve God while you are young, when you're making decisions to do the things that the Lord has sent you into this earth to do, understanding that his plans for you are to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you hope in a future and a great outcome, according to Jeremiah 29 and 11, then you realize that what you have been called to do would be to serve someone else, not just for your selfish ambition. That's right. So whatever you choose to do in the marketplace is going to serve someone else that you desire to be a servant leader, mm -hmm. that what you do is going to make a difference in someone else's life is going to affect change and it's going to help another person. Okay. And then decisions, that means confusion. You know, any type of confusion and unrest and division, you know, envy, being jealous of someone else, drunkenness. And we know what that looks like, wild parties and other things like it, other sin like it. And then it goes further to say, let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Simple. Simple. Point blank period. That's that's Full what it says. You see, you cannot be practicing all this and uh, you will inherit maybe part of the children of God. Inherit yes. that kingdom that we all are striving to to be. Mm -hmm. You know, you do the right thing, children, brothers and sisters, men and women of God, do the right thing. Yes. Do the right thing. So if you might not just fully have you know uh, detailed everything, go back and read the book of Galatians. You know, it will fully explain to you what you shouldn't be doing That's right. with your life, okay? If you want to inherit the kingdom of God. That's Amen. right. So we're going to move to number six. Yes. Number six. Okay, and profitatory, yes. just for those who may not know, what does the kingdom of, of God look like? That's eternal life. That's right. Because where we are currently in this world is temporal. It's temporary. I call it the marketplace. We, okay. came, we all came here to trade. That's it. In the end, we are going back home. That's this it. This is not our home. We are all passing through. Yes. Like Solomon said, this is not our home. All of us are passing through. That's the right. Everything we do over here is vanity. That's it. It's like a, a smoke. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like chasing after the wind. Uh -huh. It's nothing. You see, today disappear tomorrow. Do the right thing. Where we all, we have our internal life and smile and look at each other and we say we made it. Yes. <laughs> Do the right thing. Okay. Okay. So yes. go to point number six. Uh, it says, study Galatians 5, 22 to 23 on what you should do. Yes. Okay. This is what we should be doing. This is where we should be spending our life. They say, snake gives birth to snake. Right, snake mm -hmm. gives birth to snake. That mm -hmm. Satan gives birth to Satan. Mm -hmm. When you have the, 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 the fruit of the spirit in you, the Holy Spirit in you, all that will come out of you should be the fruit of the spirit. That's it. That's it. See? Yeah. So what we're going to read over here is what we should be producing because we are in us. We have the Holy Spirit in us. That's it. That's it, Prophet okay. Byproducts of the fruit of the spirit. We should be yielding. This is how people should. This is what people should see your life. In your life, this is what your life should look like. You should be reproducing the fruit of the Spirit. And that that we just mentioned before in number five on what you should not do is what Prophet Atoy is talking about. That is strange fruit. That is not of God. That That's comes right. out of the sinful, dark nature. But what we're talking about is the new nature. That's as a new creation in Christ Jesus, these are the things that we should be yielding out of our life on what we should do. So I love it because we use this Galatians as our moral compass. So now let's talk about what the beautiful young doctor is saying here on what we should do. And that is according to the word of God. But... Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, 
joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, and also as long-suffering or forbearance, also known as I, lo I love that self-control because self-control can really put you in shape. Yes. Because if you can exercise control, patience, mm -hmm. meaning there are certain things you probably want to do right now because of limitation, because of age, I'm going to control myself. I'm going yes. to prevent myself. I'm going to hold up from doing it. If you have the ability to, that's called long suffering too. That's if it. you have the ability to control yourself, man, you can sit through this world and have all the, the, the fruit of the spirit in you. That self control is so important. That's right. Do not have sex until you, you, you are married. Yes. It takes self control, it takes discipline, no matter the temptation. You know, no matter how they tell you how beautiful you are, okay, how this you are, blah, blah, you're trying to get on, get hold to you. But when you have the ability, you have the Holy Spirit. Spirit in you, are you able to control yourself? In the end, it's going to be pleasurable. Very Absolutely. pleasurable. Yeah. Okay? But there are a lot of diseases and a lot of things. There are punishments for every sin. Mm -hmm. For every sin, there's a punishment. Everything yes. we do, there is a punishment for it. The wages or of sin. Or a reward for it. The reward is sin. It's dead. It's okay? dead. The wages of sin. So, is dead. whatever, and I say, for those out there that study computer and say garbage in garbage out whatever mm -hmm. you put into you is what is going to, is what is going to come out of you mm -hmm. okay so if you put good things into your spirit good things will come out if yes you put bad things into your spirit bad things will come out if you have this the spirit of god in you all you will exude are all the fruit of the spirit Absolutely. all good things so this is the area you should concentrate so which means if you do one thing and focus on god right uh, Matthew 6, 33, right? Mm -hmm. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. all other things will be added unto you. That's right. So if you are, instead of pursuing this and pursuing that and pursuing this, just pursue God. Because in God, in him, you will find the rest of this stuff. Absolutely. Everything else will in be him. added. Yes. You don't have to get it from here, left, left and right, seven different, you know, uh, uh, direct. No. Just focus on God. Jesus. The Holy Spirit, just focus on the Trinity. In Him, you will find the rest of the stuff. That's right. It's automatic. You'll find life. Choose automatic. life today. Choose life today. When you enter into the life cycle of salvation, that is where the benefits and the rewards are imputed to you. Receiving Jesus into your heart as Lord and Savior, like you said, the mm -hmm. kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first yeah. the kingdom mm -hmm. of God yeah. and, and his, his righteousness. That's right. And all other things will be added unto you, will be imputed to you. And we come to tell you today that there is no shortfall in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that, nothing missing, nothing broken, plenty, everything plenty. that you need. Plenty, yes, plenty and it will manifest in to your life that's exactly right so yes but the the holy spirit produces this kind of fruit this is what you should be yielding this is what you should be producing this is what you should do and this is how you should behave with love and joy and peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control against such there is no, no law. law there is no law against these things There's no law against good stuff that's it that's what you should be doing let's put the final yes, slide on, yes, the, yes. on the screen amen so that we can uh, conclude with this the time is flying it Jesus. is <laughs> that's time good. is flying yeah then point number seven See, the most important thing a person can do is respect god and obey his command this is solomon uh, speaking over it. Yes. He said, obey God. He said, fear God and obey His commandment. Mm -hmm. Okay, meaning whatever He wants us to do, whatever is in the scripture, what say we should do is what we should do. Yes. Reverend Him. When they say obey or fear God, it doesn't mean when you see God, you start running. Okay? <laughs> Don't see God and start running. <laughs> Reverend Him. Respect. Yes. Respect Him. Say, oh, God Almighty, can you imagine how much respect we give to our stars? You know, over here, if you see a superstar, right, right. or if you see uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the president, or you see uh, a senator, or a basketball player, or start with the, how we just, how people go over there, okay? Then what do you think about God, your own creator? Yes. What do you think about him? If you can give out this respect to star, or a human being, this, the creation of God, what, 
are you supposed to do for God who created you? Absolutely. Reverend him. Yes. Bow. It's your father. It's everything. Okay. Yes. Reverend him. It's not saying to run from him. Yes. And obey his commandment. So when you do this, man, you don't have anything to worry about because the rest of the things, they are irrelevant. What is important to him is to reverend him Absolutely. and obey his commandment. Okay? Absolutely. So this mighty young man here, this is what he is exuding right here from Amen. the word of God. Amen. He is saying here, clearly, as you can see, he's saying now what we should learn from everything that is written in this book. What is this book? The unadulterated word of God. Our, our basic instructions before leaving this earth. That is the good book. The, the good book of, of, of our code of conduct. That that uh, is our legislation. That that is our precepts. That that is our constitution. This mighty young man of God here is just letting us know what we should learn from this book and that is the most important thing when it's all said and done just as you said Prophet Toy that the most important thing is that we can do is to respect and reverence God and obey his commands That's right. because he knows everything about all of us even the secret things even the secret things mm -hmm. and he knows about all the good and the bad things, and they will be weighed on the scale of righteousness according to Elohim God's judgment, yeah. not our own, according to him. And he will judge everything that we do. So that's equally a warning, Prophet You see, we use the word scale of, of righteousness a lot. Some of you might be asking, what is this scale? If you have the regular scale, you put bad or Satan on one side mm -hmm. of the scale and put God on the other side of the scale, Right, if you are in the middle, when you try to wait, you have to make sure you wait towards God. Yeah, you stay in the session of God, otherwise, so that when the skate teeth, it's going to teeth towards God. That's it. If you do too much of Satan, satisfying your flesh, you're going to tick towards Satan, mm -hmm. you're, going to, you're going to be on Satan's side. Mm -hmm. So, you want to make sure you balance in God's session, okay? I mean, that's good, it's very, very important. Work. Continue to take every step that you take going forward. Let it be towards what God wants you to do. That's right. Okay? Every decision you make, make sure you are satisfying your spirit, not your flesh. Because your flesh wants so many things that is against the spirit. They want, they are enemies. Mm -hmm. Okay? Make sure God wins that battle in you. That's it's right. Okay? That's right. And you know, when, we, when you speak to just to further interject about that scale of righteousness, and we just talked about the fruit. That that is of our sinful dark nature and that that is of the fruit of the spirit, that that is of our new nature. Right. And when you are weighing what you are producing on that scale, if the scales are balanced, that's a problem because that means you're lukewarm. <laughs> that's right. We are giving too much. We are giving equal to God and Satan. Yes. Okay, that is for Benes and Anadima. Okay, to be, to be in that kind of scale. That's right. You just described it right. Mm-hmm. You know, Rev, uh, uh, Revelation 3.16, the lukewarm stage. Yes. No, 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 no. How can God and devil be sharing the same thing? Equally? Okay. Equally. No, you're you you're balancing out. It says okay. either you are hot or cold. Either That's you are right. in for God or you are in for the devil. It's up to you. Okay. If you are lukewarm, he will spit you out. You understand? That's right. You should right. be also out for God. Lockstep with God. That's right. Okay? Yes. So, number eight which is our final point, is remember that God will judge you for everything you do. Yes. Yeah, you might have the freedom, you might have all the choices, okay? But just remember, in the end, every decision is going to be judged. Mm -hmm. So choose wisely. <laughs> it's just yeah. that simple. Oh, choose on. wisely. Make the right decision. You know, we so much love our God that they don't just, He, he does your corner us to do just one thing, yes. you know. But he, you got to wish that you have made the right choice and choose God's way. That's right. He give us the liberty to do what we want to do. That's it. Okay, it's not a God of, uh, 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 it's a jealous God. But he just hope that we, people ask, how come Jesus have not come yet? He said he's not slow to come, as the world understands slow to be. Yes. He said he's slow to come so that so many lives will be saved. You understand? So yes. many of us will do the right thing and make the right decision. Because if we were to come right now, hmm, so many souls will be gone. 
to mm -hmm. be going to hell. Mm -hmm. So he's slowing in coming so that all of us can get it right. Yes. Because he wants to save so many lives as many as possible. Amen? Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You know, brothers and sisters, our time has gone. Okay, I mean, this topic is just a, is, is the final, which we call part two of the message that started last week. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we do hope that you learn something from it. But I will do, I do encourage you to please read the book of Galatians. Yes. And Ecclesiastes as well. Mm -hmm. Read the book of Galatians, the entire Galatians and the entire book of Ecclesiastes. Okay? Please. Of course, you know, we will never close out our broadcast without giving you the opportunity to know Jesus. Yes. It is time now to yield to our evangelistic prophet, the most beautiful one as such, <laughs> for the plan of salvation. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Latoy. Listen, brothers and sisters in Christ, come on. This is your opportunity. You've heard it all. You've heard it all, and it was equally said to you in these last points that the most important thing is to respect God, reverence Him, and keep His commandments. We've equally given you the way to do that, giving you that opportunity to say, this is what my moral compass should look like. This is what the scale of righteousness should look like for me, and it should be tilted in the favor of doing the will of the Father, yielding the byproducts of Holy Spirit, that I am indulging my new nature in Christ Jesus, not my old sinful dark nature. All right, brothers and sisters in Christ, so this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ today. Come on. As you see these young people right here ser serving God and surrendering, as long as you have breath in your bodies, you can do the same. It's not too late until it's said too late. And right now it's not too late if you can hear us speaking to you. This is your opportunity to give your life to Christ and then get connected to a Bible teaching church. And we also suggest that you continue to follow us here. Then begin to share your faith journey with other men and women of God, whether they be young or whether they be seasoned, whatever that looks like, share your faith journey. But first, give your life to Christ today. Now, the word of God says in the plan of salvation, so we're going to walk you through this. Romans 10, 8 through 11 says, the word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning the faith that we proclaim. That if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. So now pray this prayer with us, brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, and if you're not yet, you will be. So you are, I'm decreeing and declaring that you are our brother and sister in Christ. If you have to do a heart reset or a hard reset, do it now. Rededicate your life. If you know that you've heard something today that would warrant you saying, Lord, I repent because I've been yielding a uh, fruit from the other side of that scale from my sinful dark nature. Now as a new creation in you, I repent. So search me so that I can yield the byproducts of the fruit of the spirit because I understand my moral compass it is in you. Now, come on, brothers and sisters in Christ, pray this prayer. Father, in the name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, I come before your throne of grace. And I confess my sins in a stance of surrender with a repentant heart, asking you to forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And by confessing my sins and asking for forgiveness clears all legal ground that the enemy has against me. Jesus, Yeshua, 
I surrender my life to you today. And I believe that you died on the cross of Calvary and on the third day you were raised from the dead. I believe that you transcended into heaven and now sitting at the right hand of Elohim God, making intercession for me. I believe that your blood paid for my sins, giving me the free gift of salvation and eternal life. I accept that free gift and I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would come into my heart and that you would take up residency within me. Fill me with your love, with your truth, and with your light. Thank you, Yahshua Jesus, for the benefits imputed to me because of what you did on the cross of Calvary, granting me full access to the kingdom of Elohim God. Now I as well am seated in heavenly places with you, I by Father, for the rest of my life. In Yahshua Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, brothers and sisters in Christ. Look, get connected and stay connected. Come on. We love you. We love you back. And equally, we're going to ask you to, if you have not, go ahead and follow us here at www.bbm.global. Go to the bottom of that page. Click on the YouTube icon. We'll take you to our YouTube channel and we'll give you that opportunity to ring that notification bell. Yes. And once you do that, you will receive notification Anytime we are on. So, yes. Amen. Amen. We love you. We love you back. Hugs, hugs, hugs. Enjoy, and of course, enjoy the weather. Yes. And be blessed. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. <laughs> we love you. We love so you back. You, so you, have, a, you have a music for them today. We yes. do, Prophet Atoy. Yes, we do, of course. And we are just going to share with you another version of what we shared on last week. Have it all. Have it all. And that is the reprise of that. So let's share. All right. Have it all by Fresh Start Worship. If you want God to have it all, I need somebody to open your mouth, lift up your hands, and tell God to have it all, Father. Come on. This is a perfect moment to dump everything you've been carrying for the last.